Well, I'd love to welcome you all to Spine Talks. This is our series on disc replacements, and specifically, we're going to talk about cervical disc replacements right now. Disc replacements are something that's relatively new in the world, and we're going to bring experts to you. The National Spine Health Foundation has a medical and scientific board, which is comprised of the nation's best physicians. And we're gonna to speak to some of them tonight about their experience, which is vast, about cervical disc replacements. So my name is Dr. Tom Schuler. I'm a spinal surgeon. I'm CEO of the Virginia Spine Institute and president of the National Spine Health Foundation. And I've been doing cervical disc replacements for almost 20 years. Next, we're gonna ask Dr. Todd Landman to talk about his experience and his background. Welcome everyone. Yeah, I also have been in practice 30 years of spinal neurosurgery in Los Angeles in uh, Beverly Hills at Cedar sinai and uh, faculty at UCLA. And I also have been involved in artificial disc replacement from the early 2000s, involved in the clinical trials and the cervicals and lumbars for uh, most of the discs. So we've had quite a, a long, uh, many years of experience as well as having some personal implantations into myself. So we can enlighten everyone about that. All right, next from the great state of Texas, Rick Geyer. Rick, can you tell us about your background? Sure, thanks, Tom. We've been doing disc replacement, uh, having done my first one in 2000. So it's 21 years since we've been doing lumbar and then followed with cervical in the early 2000s. So like Todd, we've been involved in, I think, over a dozen FDA trials testing both lumbar and cervical disc. And Armin from the snowy uh, state of Salt Lake City and uh, Utah. Well, thank you, Tom, again, for inviting me today. And uh, unfortunately, today is about 100 degrees outside. So I wish it was a little bit colder and a little bit nicer. But uh, uh, I have now been in practice for almost 20 years. I'm the founder and director of the Dish Replacement Center here in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm very passionate about this technology. I've been focusing on it for almost 15 years now. I've been involved in five different clinical trials, uh, all of them in the cervical spine. Uh, it's, it's a technology that I think is a game changer for our patients. I've had uh, just a tremendous number of patients who come back are incredibly happy with this particular procedure. And I'd love to kind of answer any questions that any of our patients would have regarding this technology. What is a disc? I mean, we're talking about disc replacements. What, what is a disc? What is a normal disc? And what does it do? A normal disc has two parts. It has the nucleus, which is the center. And then it has the rim, which is called the annulus. And when you get a rupture or a herniation, then they're, they're really describing the same pathology. So a rupture is when the ring tears, a herniation is when the soft jelly or the nucleus comes out and then pinches a nerve that will give you the shoulder pain, the arm pain, numbness and tingling. So typically, um, you know, most people don't have a problem, but after the age of 40, about 40 to 50% of patients will show some varying degrees of degeneration of the disc. And fortunately, only a small percent end up getting herniated disc that then get what we call the arm pain or what we commonly term as radiculopathy. So Todd, what is an artificial disc? We talk about a normal disc, this, this, elastic fiber structure that holds bones together, allows them to move. What, what's an artificial disc and why do we have them? Well, these artificial discs were designed really to replace the degenerative and herniated discs that are in the neck. Traditionally, we would remove the disc to decompress the nerves and relieve the patient's pain and then fuse it by putting a bone graft or a material with the plate and screws to lock it which really provided a little less motion of the spine and the outcomes were, were very good. However, as the total knee and total hip community found out, you know, in, in the old days when you had a bad knee and hip, they were fused back in the day. And then nobody would consider having a hip fusion or a knee fusion today. The reason we get away with doing a fusion traditionally in the cervical spine is you have five discs. So if you fuse one or two, well, you have three other ones that keep moving. Invariably, that increases the stress on the other discs and they fail. So artificial discs are devices that mimic motion of the natural disc. So when we remove the bad disc, we insert an artificial disc, which is typically made up of titanium end plate components and a core of high molecular weight polyethylene. Typically, there are other types of discs that are FDA approved that have different core constraints and mobilities. So these discs allow you to maintain your motion of the spine, but yet 
relieve the pressure on the pinched nerves and provide stability, provide pain relief, and improve your neurologic condition. Why have an artificial disc? If we have fusions and they've been done for years, don't they work? Why do an artificial disc? Common sense would tell you that if you can preserve the motion that was naturally there, that is gonna give you a better outcome, right? So again, as Todd mentioned, for a long time, we did not have the proper technology in place and really the only option that we had available to us was fusion. We now have had a number of different clinical trials uh, comparing disc replacements to fusion. And in almost every single clinical trial, the disc replacements are found to be at least equivalent and in many cases superior to fusion when it comes to what happens to patients in terms of their functional outcomes, what happens to their, uh, what happens to uh, future surgeries that the patients may need as, as they recover from the original surgery itself. So with Artificial discs, we are able to preserve the natural motion that's normally there. Uh, many times, again, what uh, uh, Dr. Geyer mentioned was that you have a herniated disc that's pinching a nerve that's causing horrible pain down the arm that may cause weakness or numbness. And, uh, and these patients who come to us needing surgery, now we have the option of giving that, that pain relief, but then also preserving the function that's there and that function being motion. Uh, and again, uh, this is something that now we've been doing for almost uh, 20 years in this country. Uh, for the past 15 years or so, we've had FDA approved discs available in this country uh, that uh, now can provide our patients with much better options. <laughs>